make sure that I could try. I would feel better if I would go. He would drive the one who breaks his nights. He took the courage of her, you know. But anybody else, whew, I, I was hurt, you know. But I got to learn to drive. And uh, I'm driving. Inside of us, hallelujah. For us to 
remember his walk. He walked with love and integrity. He walked with his head held high. No matter what place he was in, he changed the atmosphere. That was my dad. If you didn't like him, he would change it around and you would fall in love with him. No matter what atmosphere it was, he knew how to change it. Because he had God on the inside. And it showed how to work on the outside. And when you walk like that, hallelujah, God can't do nothing but change somebody's mind, change somebody's heart. That's what God does. Hallelujah. So I thank God for my dad. He showed us how to laugh. Laugh in church. We had so many laughs in church. It was funny. Because of just the man he was. Things would be so much lighter because sometimes when you go into a church, you could cut things with a knife because it's so thick in there. But when my dad was in there, he knew how to break it up and make it make it fun. And that's that's one of the reasons why I, I got into the church. I didn't get into church just because my dad was a pastor. No. Because I could have did my own thing and went my own way because I had my own mind. That's right. But I got into church and to love God because the way my dad loved him. Yeah. I got into church because I saw how he commanded God's spirit to fall on him. Yeah. And I loved it. And I said, I want what he got. Yeah. I want to be able to do what he can do. You know, and, 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 and my dad, every time he got into the pulpit, he would take his shoes off. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> because he said, the ground that I stand on is holy ground. So I can't allow my shoes to be up here with, 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 with all of that because I done walked through so many things and I done did so many things, but these feet here yeah. is going to be able to walk yeah. and step into holy ground. That's right. So I just want to draw the number. I'm going to let my brother go because I'm starting to feel a little something and I'm starting to feel like I'm was great. The greatest legacy he could pass on to his children, to his grandchildren, and to his great-grandchildren is not money. It's not material things. It is the legacy of faith, love, protection for family and his community. Most of all, is to make people happy yeah. and to show them who God is in their life. That's who my dad was, guys. So if you can't remember anything else about my dad, remember that he loved God and he just loved to praise him and no matter where he was. He, he used to go to the beach with a suit. A hundred degree weather with a suit. Because he had to represent who he was in God. He wanted people to know, I'm not no regular dude. That's what he said. I'm a pastor. Yes. So I got to show myself as a pastor. Right. Because somebody may need me to pray for them. That's right. Somebody may need, may, need, may, need, may need me to hug them. Yeah. Somebody yeah. may need me to show them how to love. Yeah. So I thank God for my dad. I thank God that he showed me how to love on people even though they don't love you back. He showed me how to, to be around people that don't want to be around you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That was my dad. And I thank God for him. And I'm going to walk the way he told me to. With my hand held high. Come on. And let everyone know. For God I live. And for God I live. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Come on, Aaron. Joseph C. Victor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bishop is every time I call him. And it, it, it brought me to, I beseech you, therefore, my brother, Come on. by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Come on. holy, acceptable to God. Which is your reasonable, reasonable, reasonable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Present is what he did. He presented himself in his walk. He presented himself in his talk. Even though he didn't know the words sometimes. Even though he couldn't pronounce the words uh, correctly. You still know exactly what he was talking about. That's right. Come on, boy. So his representation of and, and his the way that he presented himself, you made sure that, that you wanted to do the same yeah. as Joseph C. Thickpen. When you was around him, yeah. you did the same as Joseph C. Thickpen. Because he said, we, we, got to, we got to live like Christ, we got to walk like Christ, we got to talk like Christ. On, so so what, what, what we need to do is, Live by Christ. <laughs> what we need to do is walk like Christ. That, that, is, that is our reasonable service. That, he don't ask for much. He just asks for a reasonable service. So then, so if you keep on looking at this word, it means to, to give, to bestow, to, to I also read that, that you got to point in a certain direction. Uh -huh. yeah. So when you live in, live to point in the direction of God. Give your life to Christ. Give your service to your Father. And, and everything else will be all right. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Will it on me? Will it on me? God, oh God, I need to get service. What are we doing? What are we doing? Will it on me? Our reasonable service is to meet him at the end. And when we meet him at the end, We'll be able to hug and we'll get our reward come on up a little higher and I'll make you rulers. Come on, boy.
see Elk Cow and Jerry, he's gonna come and he's gonna give us our smiles and let you know, come back and introduce that. I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, we're going to stand when he comes with the exception of the family after Elk and Elk and Cherry has saying, God help me, I feel the Holy Spirit. After Elk and Cherry has said, I'm gonna ask everybody to stand to your feet and receive our eulogist who has come all the way from your part of New York. We sat and had a chance to talk and chat with those seven and seven people, and I can tell by his spirit that God has given him the word for us in time, on time, and for the rest of our time. So after Elder Cherry has come, we're going to stand to love and receive our eulogist, who is none other than Pastor Deshaun Burrell. And then after that, he's going to give us the life of life, and then we'll get ready to move on just a little further. Clap your hands and the Monday, February 7, 2022. 
to, whereas God our Father hath brought to a close the life of a great man of God, according to his tender mercies. God, who is infinite in his, in his wisdom, makes no mistakes. Whereas the moderator, Empress Thickman, demonstrated a life of outstanding leadership as a member of the Little Baptist Association, October 1995. He became the moderator in 2009 to 2017, serving for eight years in diligence and faithfulness. Whereas the moderator, <clears throat> And British Dickman introduced many in intricate ideas such as the Minister Wives fashion show, pre-registration, registration forms, the Chain Breaker Revival 2011, the Youth Department Christmas Party, the Worship of Semi-Annual and Annual Sessions, the Good Little Baptist Association members, the membership packets, the emergency assistance request program for nine churches, the six and bereavement requirements, the vision statement of the Goodwill Baptist Association, the pastor's prayer meeting, the WHK Washington Hammer Kelly College Scholarship Fund, and the home ministry mission. He was also instrumental in completing the status of the Goodwill Baptist Association as a tax-exempt exhort organization, whereas because of the dedication of the leadership of the Goodwill Baptist Association bylaws were completed and amended, he was consistent and determined to make the Goodwill Baptist Association informative and great. Therefore, it is resolved, though our hearts are heavy, <clears throat> he has been transferred to the church triumph. We bow in acceptance of God's plan to gather each of us his merciful arms when we fulfill our task on this earth. Resolve that we embrace this family and our common bond of grief and remembrance of a beloved soul. Be it further resolved that a period of official mourning will be observed to acknowledge the passing of the moderator and for this Reverend Dick and Steve. Thank you, I'm sorry. And a copy of the resolution will be given to the family and kept in the Goodwill Baptist Association archives. John 14, 1 and 13. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. It is, if it were not so, I would have, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that I, that where I am, they may be also respectfully submitted on the 12th of March 2022 on the behalf of the officers and members of Goodwill Baptist Association, Reverend Dr. Roger Hamburg Mark. Amen. 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 Okay. The resolution for the Church of the Living God Inc. Pastor Deborah E. Morris of Yonkers in New York. To the First Lady, Minister Joseph Dickman Jr. and the entire Dickman and Cartwright family, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me and my father's house. Are many rooms? If we're not so, would I told you that I go and prepare a place for you, and then I will prepare a place for you. I will I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be, John 14, 1 and 3. It is with a deep sadness and our, and our deepest sympathy to hear the departure of your husband, father, Reverend Joseph E. Dickman, Sr. Yet, when we think of the word of God from John 3, 3 and 16, which states, for God so loved the world that he believed that he gave his only begotten son, there, Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We understand that he may be departed from this place, but has eternal life with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which gives us joy and hope. Reverend Hickman loved the Lord, served, and served him with all his heart and soul. We, sorry, he was a true witness and a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing souls to the kingdom. He loved his church, family, the family, the love of his life, first lady Lodietta, his biological family, and the church community at large. 
He leaves a, a legacy of love, compassion. The spirit of love has touched so many people in the church, community, and beyond. He will forever, he will be forever remembered and forever blessed. Believing in God's word that Reverend Joseph Stephen and Senior was ready to meet the Lord of his salvation, and he believed that his thoughts were similar to Paul's. 2 Timothy 4, <clears throat> 4, 6 through 8, 6. For I am now ready to be offered, already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of the departure is at hand. 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 8. Finally, there is, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous, the righteous judge, <clears throat> will be will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who loved his appearance. We love, we love you, and will continue to pray for you as we hold on to God's unchanging hands, knowing that twenty, not to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. 21 to him <clears throat> to him be glory in the church Christ Jesus in all generations forever and ever Ephesians 3 20 and 21 you and your family are in thoughts and prayers with loving thoughts and sympathy Pastor E. Morris and Elder Willie Morris of the church family at the Church of Living God Inc. This is the last one I promise you guys. <laughs> So uh, this is the resolution from his church, the Mount Calvary Miracle Church. Resolution in loving memory of our beloved pastor, Reverend Joseph C. Thickman. When we climb up a ladder, we must begin at the bottom and ascend step by step until we arrive at the top. And so it is with the principles of the gospel you must begin with the first and go on to learn until you learn all the principles of exaltation. But it will be great while after you pass through the veil before you will have learned them. It is not to be comprehended in this world. It will be a great work to learn our salvation and even beyond great. According to his tender mercies, God was infinite in his wisdom seemed fit to move from our midst. Our beloved pastor, Reverend Joseph C. Thickman Sr. on February 7th, 2022. We, the members of the Mount Calvary Miracle Church, Mother Family, know our love, hearts, and prayers are with you as we gather to celebrate the life and legacy of a fearless, noble, influential spirit whose mere presence was so powerful and impactful that it touched everyone of us in a special way, and we will always remember. Whereas Reverend Joseph C. Thickman Sr. professed his love and hope in Christ by giving his life to him in October of 1974, the call was so great that two years later he acknowledged God's beckoning to be the voice to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As his love and dedication grew from the word of God, Pastor Cousin saw fits for being him as a minister in November of 1982. He attended the Manhattan Bible Institute of New York, graduated in June of 1986, and continued to serve faithfully at Calvary Baptist Church in White Plains, New York, for 20 years until he was called to pastor a lap to the Mount Calvary Miracle Baptist Church in 1994. Reverend Dickman became the pastor of the Little Mount Calvary Miracle Baptist Church on March 12, 1995, under the leadership of Reverend Joseph P. Dickman. The church underwent a great reformation as the membership and ministry grew immensely over the years. Pastor Stickman's influence was not only limited to the Bronx community, but was far reaching. Reverend Joseph C. Thickman served as the third moderator of the Progressive Baptist Convention of New York City in November of 2010. Reverend Joseph E. Thickman was anointed the moderator of Goodwill Association of America. <clears throat> and on, excuse me, on November 1st, 2017, Reverend Thickman retired as a moderator of Goodwill Baptist Association.
Jesus. Reverend Dickman initiated a great natural and spirits to the true renovation, which allowed him to become a great force in countless cities across the county, across the country. Whereas Reverend Steve Dickman Sr. was a visionary who devoted his life to carrying out God-given vision of empowering lives to grow, grow through the likeness of Christ through love, education, guidance, and support, he has become our inspiration. Pastors, immeasurable acts, which motivated us to dream more, learn more, do more, and ultimately become more, has impacted us to transform spiritually, financially, physically, mentally, and emotionally. The great, irreplaceable life of pastor that can live is one of a servant with its foundation of pure love will now be attached in a memory to be duplicated by men. When you asked about the legacy that he desired to pass on, his response was, my legacy is my life. It has very to, it has very little to do with what I say, and it has everything to do with how I live in front of the ones who are expected to carry on my legacy. Pastor Dickens' greatest strength lay in his effortless performance of Matthew 28 chapters and for Matthew 28 chapter, verses 18 through 20. He is the substance of the Great Commission movement in his family first, as well as his community. Whereas Reverend Joseph C. Thicken Sr. is survived by his adored wife, our leading lady, Lolita Thicken, who he fondly calls Hansel. Their five biological children, Minister Joseph C. Minister Joseph C. Thicken Jr., of Alicia. Beatrice Dickman, Minister Aaron Dickman, Minister Rodney G. Dickman, Minister Terrell Dickman, and the adopted children, Michael Dickman Sr., Gwendolyn M. Rollett, and Mary Marie. We're at the passing of our own Dickman. Is the will of God, all oh, there, oh, there's a human tie that has been broken. We are acknowledged and consoled with the words of Jesus in John 14 that reminds us to let us not let our hearts, let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I will prepare a place for you. And if I will prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may also be. Therefore, if you resolve that, we embrace the family because we all have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. To the family, we you know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. We want you to know that we share sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that our loss is having gain. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution will be given to the family of Pastor Dickman, and a copy will be kept at the Mount Harbor Medical Church Archive, humbly submitted March 12, 2022, to the Monique Brown Church the Little Mount Harbor Medical Church Board of Directors. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me 
know that God is good. His mercy may do it for you. Come on here. You know, uh, I was happy to see him on a different occasion and seeing his face and smile and of course his companion be right there with him. He's a pretty preacher. Hey, man, tell the Lord thank you. I just enjoy hearing him and we know that God is good in time like this and we know time is well spent and here to render a song to his family and friends. That, you know, it's good to see each other's face. Amen, amen, amen. But when we go through life and working and doing what God tells us to do, one day I want to see his face. I want to look to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because just one moment in God's kingdom, we will pay for it all. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right.
we are good despite how bad we really are. <laughs> so then the Hebrew writer says that God is looking for some good ones. Uh -huh. He backs because it is there that Jesus declares, if you prepare me a body, you will not have to look any further because I'll be the baby born in a manger for you. Come on. So then the Apostle Luke who writes this book called The Acts of the Apostles. Then it shows us that the steps of a bodily believer who boldly is professed behind the Hebrew and writer can be discovered in the sixth chapter and the third verse of the book of Acts. Come on. One thing that Luke suggests is that you won't have to question the quality or the quantities of a good one because good talents and gifts from good people always show themselves. The distinction and difference between those who are good and those who claim to be good that the claim to be good have to talk about when the call to be good just show up. All right, All right. All right. Work, sir. Work, sir. Yeah. Luke says, and in this good one, because God can always be seen, men will shout about it. Hmm. The Holy Spirit will sanctify. I'm already holding y'all too long. It looks like some of you are looking down, so let me hold your head up a whole time. Hmm. Let you go here. Here it is. The sixth chapter of the book of Acts, Luke, our writer. The apostle, Dr. Pease, he suggests that there was some confusion in the camp. Come on, come on, come on. And in order to bring peace amongst people, Luke says that you have to look in a mess to find seven good men. Mm. Doesn't that seem like a Christian quandary? Mm -hmm. Because amongst a mess, how do you find seven good men? Well, if the truth be told, uh, Apostle Alicia, mm. we may be good today not because of our gifts or talents, but because God discovered us in a mess. Mm. Somebody asked him, what does God look for? When he looks amongst a mess, for some good men. Mm. Luke says, number one, he looks for a man who will stand between soldiers and sadistic sinners mm. to proclaim the gospel of salvation to every lost soul. Mm. God looks for good men and lost less. Can I tell you when you look for a man? To stand between Raging soldiers and the Red Sea. He saw Moses. When he looked for a father to train up a child, he saw Abraham take Isaac and some wood for a fire up to Mount Moriah. When he looked for a prophet to speak power and truth to people, he looked and saw Elijah, one man who stands against 400 prophets of Baal. Well, when he looked for another good man who would be a mentor to other men, who would be a father to his family, who would be a husband man to his own men, one wife, who would be a pastor assigned to his people. Right. God didn't have to look very far. He just looked into the sweltering heat and land of North Carolina. Right. Out there in the far infested fields, somebody said he saw the Reverend Dr. Joseph C. Pickpin Sr. When he looked for a good man yeah. in the mind of a messed up 
and mean word. Bishop, he didn't have to go very far. He looked, yeah, in the festive fields of an area or region called North Carolina. Reached out his salvific hand. Grabbed this soldier by his arm. Said to him, if you just put a Bible in your hand, I put my word in your heart. And despite those who may claim you don't have the academic accoutrements. You may not have the articulation accreditation. But if you just open up your mouth, I will speak through. And the big pin all I want to know is only one. He looked for a good one. Yeah. Somebody said he looked for yet yeah, not only a preacher, but he also looked for one who would pastor his people, who would reach out to them when they feel like they're lonely, and tell them God is a burden there. Whatever he is, you're calling through. Yeah. He's able to put a bridge over trouble. I'm holding y'all too long. When he he was looking for a good one. Somebody said, yeah, he was a father to his family. Because God Almighty I heard say that there is no better father. And that was what you said, you're a man.
week, week of activities and weekend of activities has been the legacy of Pastor Joseph C. Dickman. And so, in his passage today, he was able to see that he had his, his exact legacy printed in the passage so that when he is entombed on tomorrow, his legacy continues with him in that entombment. But then we thought, well, the legacy will be imprinted on the, in the past, and it will go with him. I want a girlfriend to have something. So girlfriend, we have the panel for you also. The legacy of Reverend Joseph C. Dickhead. And so this is for you, girlfriend. We're going to keep it and present it to you at the house so that we can have it wrapped for you. But we want you to be able to have something for the legacy to continue with you. Thank you. And as I close this portion of the service, I simply say that the songwriter tells us in the Baptist hymn, and for some of you young people, you don't have to know about this, and you won't know about this, but that's all right. But for my seasoned ones that are here this afternoon, there's a hymn that says, when the roll is called upon, I'll be dead. And so I want to be able to take the privilege today to be able to call the roll for the earthly body for the last time today. I simply say, Reverend Joseph C. Thigpen, we thank God for your life, and we thank God for the many members that we have, that we can now continue to allow your legacy to continue each and every day. Reverend Joseph C. Thigpen, Sr., may flight of angels take you to your resting place. Reverend Joseph C. Thigpen Sr., good night and no more sorrow. Reverend Joseph C. Thigpen Sr., good night, only until tomorrow. Because on tomorrow is final closure for the earthly shape. And so just whisper a prayer for them. For they will need that prayer and they look forward for the prayer that you're sending to them. At this time, we're going to prepare for our reception. We'll be led by our clergy. I'm going to ask if I can have about 10 or 11 ladies to come forward for me, please. You just come down the aisle to the serve as four girls. And if I can have about six or seven men to come forward, family offerings, it doesn't make a difference to come forward and serve as Paul. Once again, as we get ready to leave this edifice, I simply say to each of you, please remember to God be the glory for the great things he has done. Thank you so much.
I would think so. I don't know though. Yeah. Yeah, I got a family car over here. Let me go outside. Let me go outside. Thank <laughs> you. 